You just made your way into the land of Culradia, but you realize it's a dog-eat-dog world out there. And in order to get cool weapons and armor and men to follow you, you need money. Lots of money. Well, you've come to the right place, because I'm going to help you become filthy, stinking rich in Benelord. If you're new around here, then welcome to the channel. Give this video a like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon if you want to become a part of the best community in Bannerlord and soon to be all of gaming. Let's get into the video. Tournaments. These are high risk, high reward. You can bet up to 150 dinars on yourself to win after each round. And if you come out on top, at the end, you can earn a pretty penny. Pro tip, picking up the roguery perk Deep Pockets will allow you to place bets up to 300 dinars instead of 150. If you win, you also get a prize, which will probably be an expensive piece of armor, a weapon, or a stallion. One tip here is to get one or two tanky companions, as they sometimes compete in the tournaments with you. If they win, your bets will still be lost, but the tournament prize will end up in your inventory. Now with this strategy, you have the option of becoming Spartacus and joining any and all tournaments that you come across. Personally, I like this one. On the other hand, you can pick out specific tournaments to compete in. The way tournaments work is that the more lords who compete in them generally leads to a better end prize. The reason why I like tournaments, but more specifically in the early game, is because they're a great way to grow everything at once money, renown, and fighting skills. They are also a good way to practice combat in the game if you're new to it. So if you consider yourself a gambling man, or you think that your skill with a sword is enough to swing the odds in your favor, then tournaments are a great way to make money. Trading. Trading in Bannerlord works through the basic system of supply and demand. What's in supply and what's in demand is always changing and won't be the same in each of your playthroughs. This means that trading is dynamic, and if you see a good deal one day, it might not be there the next. You need to look out for trade rumors and try to snatch things up for cheap, and then travel to the next town and sell it for cheaper. Wait, no, sell it for a profit. Trading is a great way to earn money because it's easily scalable. You start out buying some things, sell it for a profit, and then use a the profit to buy more things and sell that for an even bigger profit and so on. Revolutions. You follow? Quick tip. If you pick yourself up the everything has a price perk, it allows you to trade settlements when doing barter. This can be pretty useful. Trading can be a little tedious sometimes, but it is incredibly effective. A method that I found to keep things interesting for myself is that if I'm already in a town, I'll go in and have a look at the prices of things. And if there's any good deals that I can sell at other nearby towns for a profit, then I'll buy them and I'll sell them in nearby towns. It's kind of an easy way to make some extra cash while avoiding the tedious traveling that comes with being a dedicated trader. The more you level up your trade skill, the easier identifying good deals will become. Eventually, you'll be able to see what you can sell at a quick glance with the color-coded prices. Green for cheap things and red for expensive things. Quests. Quests are all right. They kind of like that annoying cousin who you see at family gatherings. Sometimes you have a good time and other times you wish a stray arrow from a Batanian fiend champion hits them square in the face. Now, quests are an okay way to make money. It's usually either really good or very average and extremely tedious. They aren't as reliable as other money-making methods that are in this video, but quests offer you the chance to gain renown and relation with the character that you do the quest for. And if he's one of the notables, then you'll gain the option for getting better recruits from them. Quests are something that you're going to have to do in the game at some point anyway, but it tends to be the case of fishing around until you see a quest that is worth completing. You'll do a whole bunch of quests throughout the game and you'll start to get your own sense of what's worth your time and what is a hot pile of dog sh**. Some of the different quests that you can earn a good amount of coin are ambushing caravans, Lord Needs Horses, and any bandit hideout quests. They can also offer some decent loot that you can then sell or smelt down. Some of the ones that I'd probably avoid would be Artisan Can't Sell Weapon quests and the Bet Fraud quests. Smithing. 
Smithing is hands down one of the best ways to make money in Bannerlord, but it requires a bit of time and leveling up front to start to turn a profit later on. The orders section within the smithing menu offers you the chance to craft an item for a paying customer. The orders you can complete will depend on your smithing skill level. On the bottom end of it, they won't make you an overnight millionaire, but as you go up in difficulty, you can see that the money you can earn goes up considerably. You can also just make really long hafted weapons that have a high difficulty to craft. Once you craft them, you can sell them for quite a bit. In the very beginning stages, you won't earn a lot of money, but the growth in smithing can become exponential and quickly lead to ludicrous amounts that you can sell crafted weapons for. Another key to smithing is to use your companions to smith things too. This will allow you to smith way more gear than if you just relied on your own character's smithing stamina alone. The only downside to doing this is that I think your character's smithing skills won't be leveled up if you use a companion. Workshops Workshops can be a great way to earn passive income throughout your playthrough, although be prepared to pay a pretty penny up front. In recent updates, Tale Worlds have changed workshops to work within the bounds of Bannerlord's in-game trade network. This means that not every workshop will earn the same amount of money. You have to be incredibly careful when you buy a workshop because if you buy one where there is high supply and low demand for something, it can literally earn you no money at all. Trust me, I learned this the hard way. The key to workshops in the current update is to scope out an area where there is high demand for something and low supply for it too. For example, if beer is in high demand, then making a brewery in that town could be a good choice. Choosing a town with a good prosperity matters too. If the town your workshop is in is constantly plagued by warfare, then don't expect your workshop to earn a lot of money. Workshops are pretty complicated, so I'm going to dedicate an entire video on them in the future to go more in depth about them. Becoming a mercenary. In time of war, few things pay as good as becoming a mercenary, as long as you're involved with the fighting. Oh, and as long as you win too. You won't get paid much when you're dead. If you play your cards right and you keep up your influence, then you can get paid a fortune for being a mercenary. In the mid to late game, you can earn up to 20k a day. You'll get paid by the faction that employs you, but on top of that, you'll also get a lot of equipment from the loot in the armies that you take down. You can combine this with smithing, smelt the gear down, and then craft incredibly OP expensive gear to sell for crazy amounts. A lot of these strategies can be used in cohesion like this, to amplify the amount of money you can earn rather than just using one single strategy alone. So pick and choose between different things and different links that you might see fit. Here's another cheese strategy for earning money by being a mercenary in the early to mid game. Attack enemy settlements and use the force villages to give me recruits option. Hit around three villages and then return to a town from your kingdom. Ransom the lords and the lower tier troops. Sell the tier three to four troops to allied garrisons via the donate troops to garrison method. Keep the recruits and a core of tier five troops. You can also donate any prisoners that you might have to the town too. Fight medium to large bandit parties and hit the hideouts that you come across along the way. Do this and you will grow your influence immensely, thus growing the amount of money that you're going to get paid from your faction. There are a lot of ways to make money in Bannerlord, but ultimately the choice is up to you. I recommend trying to find a balance between making money and having fun. When you get to the later stages of the game and you start to own settlements, then money will no longer be that much of an issue. Just don't forget to enjoy yourself on your journey to becoming rich in Bannerlord. If you made it to the end and you like this video, then why not join the best Bannerlord community on YouTube? Subscribe and hit that bell icon if you haven't already. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of June. And at the time of this recording, we're sitting at 799. A lot more Bannerlord and Elden Ring content will be coming in the near future, so keep an eye out for that. If you have any ideas or topics about things that I should do for a video, then leave them in the comments and who knows, I just might make a video about it. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.